Luka Doncic continues to string together one incredible performance after another. His numbers this year have been unreal, and they're by far the best of his career. And as a matter of fact, we've never seen a player average 30 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists on 62% true shooting in the three-point era. It kind of seemed like Joel Embiid was going to run away with the MVP prior to going out with an injury, but with him no longer eligible, Luka Doncic has been one of the names that's frequently thrown out there as a favorite to win the award. And while everyone's of course going to have their own opinions in response to that debate of who should win MVP, I do want to lay out some of the unprecedented stuff that Luka Doncic is doing this season to showcase how seemingly unguardable he truly is, both as a scorer and a playmaker. Before we jump in, if you enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it a ton if you considered leaving a like and subscribing because it really does help me out a ton. That being said, let's get into it. As a scorer, Luka Doncic is about as unstoppable as they come because there's really not an area of the floor that he's not capable of scoring from. And from the perspective of a defense, that's of course a really big problem. Luka is shooting above league average in terms of efficiency from all over the floor, and that's on a volume and shot diet that requires you to have versatile defenders in order to try and contain him. And there's a big difference in how you need to defend Luka Doncic versus how you need to defend other high caliber scorers in the NBA. A lot of the time, aside from just trying to take away space for offenses to work with, defenses are trying to speed up offensive players to try and force them into making mistakes and turning the ball over. With Luka, you might be able to slow him down, but you're definitely not going to be able to speed him up. Luka plays at his own pace, and it really doesn't matter what you throw at him because he's going to take his time and figure out how to punish whatever it was that was thrown. Whether he's looking to score or looking to pass, he's going to find a way to punish you. At the start of this possession, you can see Luka motioning to Lively to go to the corner instead of setting a screen for him. With Lively now in the corner with Kevin Durant on him, PJ Washington's gonna come and set a screen for Luka, with Kyrie coming to set a screen for PJ, and it creates this Spain pick and roll, and this allows Luka to get going downhill towards the basket. Now, Durant's gonna feel comfortable helping off of Lively in the corner because Lively is not really a threat from three. Luka knows this, so when he draws that extra help from Durant and with Nurkic pulled so far up trying to defend the stack action, he's going to send the ball to Lively and he's going to attack off the catch. And I honestly don't know who's going to be brave enough to step in front of Derek Lively heading full speed to the basket like this. Kyrie feeds Luka in the high post here, and you can see Booker motioning to Nurkic to step up a little bit and show on Kyrie so that he can help onto Luka. But since that extra help doesn't really come, Luka capitalizes on the attention and gets Kyrie a wide open look from deep. When Luka brings the ball up here, he's going to use a spin move to split two defenders and get going towards the rim, and KD is going to have to slide over and help with Lively crashing the paint, and Luka's going to keep Eric Gordon from rotating to the corner by keeping his eyes on Kyrie up top, and then he's going to sling the no-look pass to Hardaway in the corner, and unfortunately, he's going to miss the shot. This play is interesting with how the Mavericks set it up. Conventional wisdom says to not crowd this driving lane for Luka, but Kyrie slides over to the strong side regardless and screens on Chet. With Kleba on the roll and Jada being pulled away from the middle, having to guard Kyrie, Giddy is going to have to slide over to tag the roll, and this is going to leave Derek Jones Jr. open in the corner for the catch and shoot three off of Luka's pass it's really hard to make him move faster than he wants to. You can see on this play, he's not moving exceptionally fast or with some crazy amount of burst, but still Kenrich Williams is gonna struggle to stay in front of him regardless. He hits him with the same move again, and this time he's gonna draw the foul and still get the layup to fall on the continuation. Early in this possession, Dort is hounding him really high up in the half court, and Dort is going to be active maneuvering the screen, and when Kleba rolls, Luka knows that it's going to block Dort from having a good contest, so he works his way into that little bit of space to get the shot off. Here Luka starts out near the baseline, and Kyrie is going to set this down screen for him to come up and get the handoff from Kleba. Dort is going to be chasing him hard off the screen because he's expecting that drive, but Luka hits him with the turnaround to get into the step back, gets him with the pump fake, and then he fires the shot up for the bucket. 
One of Luca's most valuable assets is his deceleration. When we think of deceleration, we think of guys like De'Aaron Fox that are so fast and then they drive and stop on a dime. You don't necessarily have to be super fast like that in order to take advantage of deceleration. And Luke is a really good example of that. Here he's bringing the ball up in transition and he's gonna stop on a dime before Shea can really get his feet set. So Luke is gonna have all the space that he needs to bang home the three. The Cavs tried all sorts of stuff trying to slow down Luka, including having Evan Mobley switch onto him on the defensive end. Mobley switches off of Washington onto Luka, and Josh Green's gonna come up as if he's gonna set a screen on Mobley, but Luka rejects it and fakes the drive up the middle to get him off balance, and then he just steps back and drains the three. Again, PJ screens and Mobley switches, but the Mavs are gonna try and get Mitchell switched onto Luka, but he blitzes and recovers and allows Mobley to get back into position. But that dribble to his left gets Mobley a little bit too far back and Luka capitalizes on it for another step back. Now you can see Mobley kind of watching for that step back going to his left. And since he's overplaying the inside driving lane a little bit, Luka goes right towards the basket, getting Mobley turned sideways. And once again, he's gonna take use of that deceleration to pull back and create the space for another step back. And even when Mobley was staying attached to him at the hip, Luca just patiently works his way towards the paint until he gets into the middle and he hits Mobley with the pump fake and bumps him off his spot a little bit before going up with his left hand to get the finish. We can see some of that deceleration from earlier on this play where he has Okoro on him, driving hard, but then stopping right at the elbow and giving him enough separation from Okoro to fire off the jumper. He's gonna get the ball off the inbound on this play and it looks like he's gonna get an easy catch and shoot three, but he hits Murray with the pump fake and attacks and he notices Sabonis letting Lively slip behind him. So he's gonna dribble to the right side of Lively to get a little makeshift screen and it gives him the lane for a step through to get to the rim and finish. He's backing down Suggs here and he's gonna pivot around him and it draws the help from Jonathan Isaac, but he uses this little pass fake to fool Isaac and he turns this brief moment of confusion into the space he needs for a fadeaway jumper. Kelly Oubre is actually doing a pretty decent job defending him here, and he makes Luka give the ball up at first, but Luka calls for it right back so that he can get the screen. And when Reed blitzes him off of the screen, Luka's just gonna turn around and go left, forcing House to slide up, but it's gonna be too late because Luka already has the defense exactly where he wants them to create an open look for Kleba. It's actually funny sometimes when he gets down towards the rim and he'll stop hitting guys with multiple pump fakes and pivots, almost lulling them to sleep so that he can get into his shot. Luca is getting whatever he wants, wherever he wants, pretty much however he wants it. In the past, his three-point efficiency has been a little bit shaky, which honestly isn't surprising given the difficulty of the shots that he shoots on a nightly basis. But this year we've seen him evolve to the point where the difficulty of those shots doesn't really matter. He's gonna make his threes at a high rate, regardless of how well defended he is. Right now, he's on pace to join Steph Curry and Damian Lillard as the only players in NBA history to shoot 45% from the field and at least 38% from three on 10 or more three-point attempts per game. It's really hard to have much of any criticism towards Luka in regards to scoring, especially because of how important his scoring is for the Mavericks in terms of being able to field an effective offense. They go from scoring 121.4 points per 100 possessions when he's on the floor this year, which would rank first in the NBA, to only scoring 113.5 points per 100 possessions when he's off the floor, which would be a bottom 10 offense in the NBA this year. They go from an absolutely elite offense to one of the worst without him on the floor. But it's starting to look like the Mavericks might be on the upswing, especially since the trade deadline. They've won five of their last seven games. They've got the sixth best net rating in the NBA over that span with a top 10 offense and a top 10 defense. And Luka has been looking better than ever. If you go and look at the standings right now in the Western Conference, the Mavericks are currently sitting at the eighth seed. But when you take a deeper look, you realize that they're only a game and a half back from the Pelicans at the five seed. With how Luka's playing and how good this team looks since the trade deadline, there's still plenty of time for the Mavericks to make a late push for home court advantage. And with how wide open the MVP race is, it's hard to say that Luka doesn't at the very least have an argument to be in the conversation. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I'd really appreciate it if you considered leaving a like and subscribing if you did and you wanna see more stuff like this. Shout out to all my patrons for supporting the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.